What's up guys, welcome to your um, 34th, um, I suppose, C++ tutorial in my series of C++ tutorials. Well, as I told you last time, today's tutorial is going to be more on object oriented or something, programming, uh, and we're going to uh, learn about classes again. And uh, well, last time, um, well, you might have heard me saying, or uh, you, or, or more correctly said, written me saying somewhere um, in one of my tutorials that um, uh, the last tutorial was going to be about dynamic memory, but uh, I dropped that and I skipped right to um, object-oriented programming right now because you know I don't feel like um, dynamic memory is a required right now. So uh, well, that's probably why, if you were wondering. Anyway, let's get started. Um, before you start uh, doing any code, you need to open up your classes.cpp file, which will be building um, or will add something more to in this tutorial. And uh, well, I promised you last time that I was going to recap this whole code uh, in the beginning right now. And uh, so that's what I'm going to do right now. First of all, we got a class called Rectangle. And uh, as I was saying, by default, all the um, content of your class has a uh, private ashes, and that means that um, the elements and no, sorry, not the elements, the variables and the functions and all that stuff that is inside your class can only be used inside the class. It cannot be called outside the class. So um, these are um, actually private variables. So we have a private variable right here called x and a private variable called i. And then we got a public field and that means that everything type below this public statement is going to be public. So we, and public means that it can be at this um, that these methods and uh, variables and everything can be used outside the class too. So um actually we got a public void called set values with two um that takes two arguments. A in variable called a and in variable called b and uh, what this function does is that it sets the private variable x equal to the value of uh, a and it also takes the um, private variable y and sets it equal to the value of b then we got a in called uh, array uh, no sorry uh, area yeah that's what it's called area and it returns the value of x multiplied with the value of y. And then right here inside our fun, uh, no, inside our uh, engine, we initialize rectangle to rect. And then we set the values of uh, this rect, of this uh, rectangle called rect. We set the values to three and four. And then we print out the array of that. And uh, so now that was your recap of uh, all that we got in this file so far. Well, uh, what you got right um, here is actually what you call an object. This is an object, and uh, a, a, you can actually think of it like a variable. The data type is um, the class name, and the variable name is the, um, you know, that's the initialization that you type, and uh, that's uh, basically, you know, the name. So we actually created a rectangle object right here. Or a rectangle variable right here called a uh, rect. So we got a uh, one rectangle called rect. So now, what if you would like a rectangle more? Then you just simply type the data type rectangle, and this one is going to be called rect two. Now you say um, rect two dot set values. Um, Five and uh, five hundred because this is really a big rectangle. Now it's up. See out. Area. Rect two dot area. So now if you try and hit F nine. you see that I get an error because I forgot a underscore right here. I'm sorry about that. Now we can continue. As I was saying, hit F9. And now you'll see that we have, first we have one rectangle with the uh, area 12 and a one 
with the area 2500. So well, what we actually did right here is that we created uh, two variables and they both have the same data type that is rectangle and uh, so actually just created two objects one called rect and one called rect2 so that's uh, actually uh, how you can create that's uh, well this is actually what I just show you right now is actually the main cause of why they called it a um, object oriented programming because you know it, it we're talking about objects so and this is an object rectangle right here is an object so um, as I was saying we actually kinda you know create two classes and you may think like okay if you're trying to hit 9 again right now then you may think that it is a little strange how you know we're using the same class we're using the rectangle class both uh, both for rect and rect2 we can agree on that right so it's weird how uh, this uh, area method can return different values and it's uh, weird how the um, set values uh, function can be set uh, to uh, different values when we're using the same function in the same class and again that's because that uh, that's uh, one of the causes why it's called object oriented programming because you know we can create many objects out of the same class so actually uh, you kind of you know uh, first uh, you have your original rectangle class that's all of this up here and then we got a um, and then actually we create a new rectangle called rect that's actually what we're doing we create a new rect a rectangle called rect and uh, it has all of the permissions and all of the functions uh, that uh, our rectangle class right here has so uh, we just created a new rectangle that has the function set values and um, area and then down here we got another rectangle called rect2 and it has all of the permissions and all of the um, functions and variables just like uh, rect and so um, actually uh, that's the idea of it you know they can work independent of each other so you know it's like um, if you uh, think of it like this the rectangle is like um, it's like the mother of all of these and then uh, all of the objects you create are just children of it so well you know you have a big mother up here this is your mother the class rectangle is your mother and then a uh, rect rectangle and then rect is a child of a uh, rectangle and uh, rect2 is a child of rectangle 2 and you know I don't know if you have a brother or sister or something but well your um, your mom and uh, dad probably looked at it like this well what's in our house is both um, yours and your sisters so well if you, uh, so well that's actually what we're doing right here if you, th if you think of this whole class rectangle as a big house where rectangle is the mother and then it has two children and that's rect and rect2 and then the mother says that okay I'm your mother and um, you are my children and everything that I contain which, what my house contains which and uh, that is and uh, by that I mean the set values uh, function and the uh, area th area function and the um, private variable x and y I contain that and that is uh, yours both you can both use it independent of each other you know it's like uh, and again if you take the example with the house you know your mom and uh, you, your sister uh, you uh, you got a big uh, box filled with toys and then your sister go uh, play with it and then your sister go plays with the um, with one of these um, you know plastic superheroes or something but well she can play with them without you having to play with them too you know you don't have to play with them just because uh, she does so she can actually play independent of you playing too and that is exactly what we got here we got a mother two children and uh, all of the mother's uh, items which means if uh, and by items I mean functions and uh, variables all of the mother's functions and variables can uh, the children can use independent of each other so uh, that's why we can create many objects out of the same uh, class actually so um, 
that was your tutorial on how uh, you can, uh, well, part 2 of classes, of course, there's many, many, many more parts to come, so I'll just figure out what our next tutorial, tutorial will be on, and uh, by that, I'll see you in my next tutorial.